Hey yo, fellow plastic painters, welcome to Painted Plastic People. My name is Charles, and I help aspiring and beginner miniature painters learn to save time and money by teaching them to paint fast and effective. And in this video, I'm bringing forth my main man vision from Marvel Crisis Protocol. So let's do it to it. I'm operating under the assumption that you've already assembled Vision. There's a pretty easy to follow guide that comes with Vision when you buy them. So just follow that along, take your time, and you'll be ready to paint them up in no time. So I decided to prime Vision and uh, Xenophall Prime just to give them natural highlights to save me some time. You don't have to prime them this way, you can prime them in just plain white, and you'll still get some good pop out of the color. So first step, we're going to give his cloak a nice lime green paint job. I'm using Jungle Green by Army Painter, but you can use anything that's roughly in the same area. Choosing to do this first because my vision is completely assembled and getting at that cloak is going to be the hardest to reach spot for me. If you're watching this before you've assembled your vision, you could put them all together aside from the cloak and then just paint the cloak on afterwards and then just glue it once you're finished. After that, I decided to paint up his rest of his bodysuit with a dark green. I'm using Wizard Orb from Army Painter. You don't necessarily have to use that, but any dark green that matches up or is in the ballpark, go for it. The big thing to watch out for is that there are some tiny little dividing lines on his arms that will tell you where the certain colors separate. So just watch out for that. Make sure you don't overlap that. It's a little tough to tell, even uh, myself when I was going over the miniature had a bit of a hard time. If you're using the game art, we're going to see that there's a big problem because the box art and the player card art are different. So you need to pick one and follow it and not be looking at both like I did and not realize that they were different. So next up, we're going to be painting the red onto it. And now this is going to go in all those little uh, intricate designs that are all around him, as well as his hands and his face. Again, you're going to have to be a little careful here because some of the spots where the paint's supposed to go aren't very clearly marked, or at least not that I noticed anyway. So just be on the lookout for that. I'd recommend for doing this to bust out a brush that has a good point onto it. I don't want to use a brush that doesn't have a very good point because you're trying to get into some pretty thin areas and there are some pretty defined spots and points that that paint is supposed to go into. Now we're going to come back with that lime green and we're going to get all these little details that are on him, such as the little shapes that are on his thighs and sides of his legs, as well as on his waist and as well as the ones on his chest and around his neck. These have some pretty clearly defined markings on them, so just be on the lookout. Some of them, like the ones on his waist, don't actually wrap around his entire body. They just kind of stop once they get to his lower back. You'll also want to put a little bit of lime green on his forehead, where his uh, solar gem is. Again, don't worry about making any mistakes. We're doing the base coating. We're just gonna be cleaning things up here. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat right away. Once we do our little bit of touch-ups before we apply our wash and shade, that's when you get to worry about being like super neat or getting any noticeable mistakes. Lastly, for Vision himself, we're gonna be hitting up those two yellow gems that are on him. The one on his chest and the one on his forehead. I'm using Devonic Yellow from Army Painter. You don't need to get too crazy with this, just get a little bit of paint on and kind of just go over the edge or the top of them with it, just to give the impression of yellow. Once we apply our uh, wash and shade here, it's going to kind of cover up around those uh, edges where you may not have gotten some paint on. So don't worry about trying to get every absolute side of it. The last thing we need to do when we base coat Vision is to base coat his base. So I'm going to be using Uniform Gray from Army Painter to do this, but again, any sort of matching gray you want to use, go for it. And you're just going to hit absolutely everything. You're going to hit the wall, the rubble, and the pavement below him. Um, 
You may have chose a different base than I did to base vision with. So you may have metal bits that might need to be done or what have you. You can use some sort of silver or dark metallic for that. But once your base is finished and you do any touch-ups you need to do, we're ready to move on to washing and shading him. Now we're going to wash and shade Vision. I used Strong Tone from Army Painter to cover most of them, but for his cloak I decided to go with the green wash from Vallejo. I just didn't want to bounce between two different wash colors on his suit, you know, hitting up green everywhere and then using the Strong Tone or a red wash for the red bits. I just didn't want to accidentally mix some colors in by accident, so I felt like going with a uniform wash for all of him except for his cloak which is pretty disconnected from the rest of his body would be the way to go. You can of course use all of one wash, it's like strong tone across his entire body and his cloak and his base. Or you could mix and match using a green wash on the green parts, a red wash on the reds, and then using something like strong tone or a, any other brown or black wash on his rubble and debris that's on his base. I just wanted to check in real quick and see if you're getting any sort of value out of this video. And if you are, if you don't mind leaving a like down below, that helps out the channel a lot. So without further ado, let's get back to it. So once he's completely dry, we're going to go ahead and do our highlights. Now you can do these in any order, but I decided to do his main green bodysuit first. So. I went back through with the wizard orb and I just painted up and re-highlighted, not going into the recesses and such where our wash and shade went, and just painting the base coat back on. Remember, you kind of want to push the paint up towards the brightest points, so that way the, the paint collects in the highest points where the brightest highlights would go. Don't worry if you don't remember to do this, it's not going to be like this huge huge thing, but it's a good idea to kind of get the practice in on that. Remember we're doing three passes. Reapply that dark green once, let it dry, reapply it a second time, and reapply it a third time before you move on to mixing in a brighter color. For me, I just want to get him to the table as soon as I can so I can get him in there beating the bad guys. So I only came back with the wizard orb and did three passes with it and then called it a day. You're more than welcome to keep going with that. You can add in a little bit of a brighter green, mix that in, but remember to do your three passes. Once the dark green was done, I moved on to the red. So we came back with my dragon's red and just the same principle, three passes, push that, try to finish your brush strokes at the highest point, but leave off the best highlights. One thing where I did make a difference though is I actually added in a little bit of a brighter red once I was done my three passes so that I would come back and do his face. One kind of good rule when you're highlighting your miniatures is to pay special attention to things like the miniature's face. That way you draw attention to it. So I mixed in a brighter red. I went over some of the main highlights of his face such as his chin, his nose, his cheeks. Or once I did three passes of that, I mixed in brighter still red, which I'm using pure red from Army Painter. And this time I did his cheeks, his forehead, and his nose. And then once I did three passes of that, I came back with just a little bit more of that pure red mixed in and did his nose and his forehead. At this point, I'd like to mention that I didn't really paint his eyes. I did make a try at it, but I think given the angle of Vision's head and just the nature of painting eyes itself, it just doesn't really look good or look noticeable. So going on from there, we need to highlight up all the lime green on him. And again, I just went back with the jungle green, redid up all his uh, little designs on his suit, and then did his cloak. When I did his cloak though, I only did the sort of uh, upraised edges, as well as the big flat areas on the side and the little bits on top. To do those thin little spots, you don't have to put the brush directly on. You can actually just use the edge of the brush and paint up like that. And remember, if you do make any mistakes while you're doing any of this, remember it's just paint, you can just reapply a wash or what have you and then just 
It'll be like nobody ever noticed, so don't worry about it. The last bit of highlighting we have to do is for his actual like base. And I decided I was gonna dry brush. So I just came back with that uh, uniform gray and I dry brushed it all across the rubble and the debris and what have you of his base as well as the top of his base. After I got a good look that I liked, I decided to come up with a brighter gray and dry brush that on as well. I used ash gray from Army Painter. After that, I was happy with the look I had. I was ready to paint the rim around his base in black and ready to seal him with your choice of sealant, whether that be matte gloss or uh, satin sealant. And there we have it, one vision ready to go for Marvel Crisis Protocol. If you enjoyed this video, leaving a like down below helps out a lot. You can leave a comment down below telling me who your favorite Avenger is, or who your favorite character in Marvel Crisis Protocol is that you like to play, or even one you just like to have, and maybe they're not even that good. <laughs> Sharing this video with anyone else that is interested in painting vision or interested in painting colors like this, that really helps out a lot as well. Remember, you can subscribe to this channel to get more painting tutorial videos, more technique tutorial videos, whatever you need for helping out a beginner miniature painter. And remember to get it to the table and have a good day.